Hello and welcome everyone. Uh, I represent Erasmus Plus and Youth and Discover EU team at the Polish Agency. Uh, I would ask Tomek to make me a co-host to be able to share the screen because for some reason I, I cannot do it. All right, thank you. So uh, we had already some sneak peek of what Erasmus Plus in the years to come uh, will look like. So now I'll uh, take this opportunity to give you a little more detailed uh, overview. It won't, won't be as detailed as uh, possible because you will still have some workshops done. So I will uh, allow myself to stop uh, my video and share the screen so that you have what it takes uh, to get the idea of what the program is going to be uh, like. All right. So as you can see, it all starts here for us. Uh, um, we already had some information about the objectives of the new program. Here we can, you can see a little, um, let's say, a recapitulation of what it's uh, going to be about. Uh, as you can see, there are two big categories of what uh, we are looking at in Erasmus Plus uh, from 2021 till 2027. Uh, we are going to promote a number of values, uh, qualities or uh, actions. Uh, and then uh, we are also going to support certain uh, initiatives and activities. And here, uh, as you can see, I underlined four uh, points, four categories that are very really vital in the new program. Uh, two speakers before me already underlined uh, certain priorities of the program. So I just want to make sure that it's clear and uh, well, um, well uh, um, summed up that uh, social inclusion, diversity, and green Erasmus, green solutions and eco-awareness are things that are absolutely necessary that we look at them in new program. And uh, also, uh, apart from other categories that are here, uh, we, are <clears throat> we are continuing what Erasmus uh, Plus uh, 2014, 2020, was about. So we are still looking at learning languages and cherishing the linguistic and cultural diversity, not only of the union, but also of Europe and beyond. Uh, since we are now looking at uh, cooperation with partner countries, as it was already made uh, clear that we all understand what partner countries are, I won't be referring to these regions uh, as neighboring partner countries, but just to make sure that it's uh, it's that uh, it's on. I will I will refer to partner countries instead of uh, giving this long description. <clears throat> All right. So we also have uh, this supporting part of what's of what's there. We will be looking at digitalization of uh, any action that is done within the youth field. So we want to make sure that digital technologies are there. Uh, and uh, the, the recent situation, you know, um, that showed us what uh, the importance of digital work, digital youth work is all about. Um, and it enabled us to continue what was done and what has been, um, uh, well, uh, undertaken by all the organizations that are involved in Rasmus Plus and not only in this program. Also, what was already mentioned that uh, we want to make sure that uh, all actions done within the new program will be international. But there are some national actions also that that uh, that are possible within the program. But uh, we want to make sure that this international international factor of all activities is there. So we want to support that, and we have some tools that are available. We will hear more about these tools during workshops, but still I will just hint what's available, right? So now uh, we have uh, these objectives that we want to look at in the program and in the projects that, uh, of course, you as representatives of partner countries and some program countries, as I could see, uh, can uh, participate in, all right? And so then we have some expectations, why we want to do that and what we want to have from it. Uh, as a, a huge family that now is, well, continuing its, uh, its work uh, within the Erasmus Plus program, we want to see, as it was already mentioned, an increased number of participants, even though there are the, the budget for the program is much bigger than previously, for the previous seven years, 
we would like to see more participants. A bigger budget doesn't mean bigger grants. It also means the bigger number of participants that can uh, benefit from the tools and activities that are available in the program. So I'm referring here to direct and indirect beneficiaries, uh, because not only um, not only direct beneficiaries and participants benefit from the program, also the target groups and the impacted uh, little uh, communes environments benefit from it. Uh, since the, the one of the priorities of the program is diversity and inclusion, we would like we would love to see uh, in our projects, uh, also with partner countries, of course, a more diverse profile of all the organizations so that the projects that we have reflect the, the societies that uh, our participants, our beneficiaries or our target groups live in. It already is reflected, of course, but still there's always some room for improvement. So we would like to invite uh, all kinds of organizations representing all kinds of fields and groups uh, to participate and get interested in Rasmus Plus because now we have, uh, as, as it was already mentioned several times, more uh, funds to uh, um, co-fund activities uh, and uh, to maybe uh, make uh, these organizations more interested in international particip participation or cooperation with other countries or other organizations. Then uh, what is really important, and it's all tied up to the, to the previous point, that we want to look at the new program as a chance for new organizations that have never heard of Erasmus+. Plus. Uh, it is possible, believe me, that there are organizations that never heard of it, uh, because it's, it's, even though it's very well known, we want to make sure that it reaches more and more organizations. So uh, we, want, we would love to see, not only in our agency, but in, in other agencies as well, because this is the priority of the program that we want to maintain, uh, that new organizations um, enter the program thanks to other organizations that are experienced, uh, that have experienced, uh, for example, like your organizations. You can be the, uh, you can convey the, the message to other organizations that may have never heard of uh, any kind of possibilities or opportunities given by the European Union uh, to uh, the youth sector. So uh, it would be uh, most welcome to see uh, an influx of new organizations that uh, total newcomers. Uh, as, uh, as it was already mentioned, the, the great majority of projects, uh, these are mobility projects. So we would love to uh, transfer these, uh, this potential that uh, is brought by mobilities in, in the field of youth uh, for learners, meaning youth exchanges, so-called, so and professionals, so that it um, supports internationalization and it, uh, of all organizations. Because uh, then it's, it's not only, um, it not only answers the priority of the program, but it also will help these organizations grow. And this is what we want to see. All right, so these would be the expectations of the, of the new uh, Erasmus Plus program and the field of youth specifically. As um, it was mentioned several times that the, the, the program base is based now, the, the youth priorities are based on the EU youth strategy. Uh, and still we, are, we want to see that these um, initiatives that are undertaken under Erasmus Plus uh, uh, will refer to, in one way or another, to engaging, connecting and empowering young people, professionals uh, or groups that support the youngsters in, uh, in what they have to face nowadays. So uh, in all activities, you can always refer to EU youth strategy. I, I warmly I warm encourage you to look into this document. It's very easy to find. It's available on the Europa EU website. So we can look at these, uh, these uh, um, qualities or these uh, descriptions that are available right there so that you can have the idea what, uh, you, perhaps you already have it. You already have had it uh, in previous activities, but I want to underline that in the new program, the activities that are, are to be realized under Erasmus Plus for the years 2021, 2027, will need to refer to the EU youth strategy and youth goals that are part of the strategy, of course. So that will be the, the short 
uh, recapitulation of the policy context uh, of the program. All right. Then we have these priorities. They were already mentioned. I won't be developing uh, each point very uh, to very uh, detail, but I want to make sure that it's well understood that uh, these four priorities uh, um, are to be um, in a way reflected in activities or ideas of new projects, initiatives, cooperations between organizations, what have you. I mean, you have more know-how how to uh, make all these uh, cooperations because you work in the field. Uh, you have, uh, well, the, the, the biggest experience possible because you have already experienced what the youth work or uh, is like. So perhaps uh, that would be a great chance to introduce uh, several uh, qualities to new projects. I want to make sure that uh, uh, it's clear that the first two, not the, fir the first and third priority on the list are, uh, when it comes to TA1 projects, the mobility projects are absolutely necessary. So these are obligatory priorities. Uh, projects uh, that uh, are realized under Erasmus plus key action one in the field of youth have to uh, answer to uh, inclusion and diversity and environment and fight against climate change priorities. Uh, these uh, have to be in a way reflected in the projects when it comes to the digital transformation and participation in democratic work, of course, are equally important, but uh, not all projects can have this component in them, right? So uh, when it comes to the, the first and third, these are obligatory. These, uh, these priorities will have to be in a way addressed in project applications but uh, submitted to agencies by program country but well organizations from program countries so it has to be made sure that um, these two are in a way uh, addressed when it comes to the eco erasmus uh, green erasmus the third priority it doesn't necessarily have to mean that uh, the projects have to be about ecology it may mean that organizations and and participants um, focus on raising awareness uh, about protecting environment, may use, uh, it was already brought up here, that they may use the eco-friendly uh, means of transport. Uh, and it's not only, um, it doesn't only mean that we, we are going to use trains only, because it's, sometimes it's po not possible just to go from Georgia to, uh, let's say, the Netherlands. It might be uh, not as uh, efficient as it, as it seems. No, it's it's not a good idea, I think, to, to go by train. But still, instead, uh, it may be uh, the, the, the priority may be realized um, by um, raising awareness of uh, preserving or saving up resources or protecting the environment by not using too many uh, unnecessary uh, materials for our workshops or youth exchanges. Uh, so it can be addressed in a number of ways, and projects that referring to a number of topics have to uh, include these uh, this priority as well. So I want to make sure that it's well um, uh, underlined that these two are obligatory, uh, and the, the remaining two are equally important. But uh, not all not all projects um, have to have an equal, uh, let's say, uh, focus on all four priorities. Some of them may be uh, more underlined in projects, but in a way, in general, all uh, actions uh, undertaken under Erasmus Plus right now, the new uh, perspective should, uh, in a way, reflect the, the spirit of, of what's already described and what my predecessor described as well. All right, so as it was, already mentioned, I will not repeat uh, uh, that, but I want to make sure that in the actions managed by national agencies, perhaps you will then 95, 90% of all in actions or initiatives undertaken by your organizations will be actions managed by national agencies, not only in Poland, but elsewhere as well. So we have uh, action one, which is learning mobility of individuals. Uh, it's not different from what was already available, but for one exception, or maybe two, but I will explain in a while. Uh, so uh, youth exchanges and youth workers' mobility were, uh, were split. So they had two separate actions, which better reflect the needs of applicants. Uh, and then we have youth participation activities. And this is total novelty. Uh, it, was, it was there uh, in Key Action 3, 
but now it's available to partner countries. And uh, it's this is exactly what um, refers to participation democratic life. So we are, uh, I would encourage you to look into this action because it's, it's a new thing and you may be interested in, in well, getting in contact with uh, organizations from, uh, from program countries to set up a new project, new initiative, just to be um, sure that you know what this action is about. You'll have a workshop about that. So it's, uh, it's you will have it explained. Also in this uh, first action, action one, there is Erasmus Plus accreditation in the field of youth. This accreditation managed by national agencies rely, uh, refers only and exclusively to organizations from program countries. Uh, national agencies in program countries are not are not uh, accrediting right now uh, organizations uh, from not from their countries of uh, interest. I mean, the countries that uh, are not set in uh, the same country. So um, right now, uh, Erasmus Plus accreditation in the field of view, this is key action key, uh, KA 150. Uh, this refers only to organizations from program country. When it comes to uh, action two, this is cooperation among organizations and institutions. We have two uh, sub actions, cooperation partnerships, which was already talked about. I will not dive into details. It will be also touched upon in the uh, workshop session. There are also small scale partnerships. I will explain in a second what it is. And so there is no action three at the national level. So this was already transferred to the commission and it's managed centrally, not on a decentralized level. All right, so we got a number of questions about accreditation. And uh, in KA1, there will be two, and there are all now already going on to uh, ways of fund it, for funding. So these are funding for standard projects that has, well, the way uh, of uh, applying hasn't really changed so far. Uh, so it's more or less the same and for accredited projects. And it doesn't really matter for organizations from partner countries what the uh, way of funding is, because uh, you as representatives of uh, or your organizations, representatives of organizations from partner countries can participate in both types of projects. So it doesn't really matter what kind of uh, uh, funding scheme or fun uh, application scheme uh, is uh, being used by a, a applicant organization, by a, an applicant organization. Uh, since uh, from the perspective of partner organization, it has uh, no impact, it doesn't really change much. The only impact is that if you are a partner organization in initiatives of an accredited organ organization from a program country, then this uh, cooperation may be ensured for a longer time of um, longer period because uh, the accredit accreditation that is perhaps awarded to, to a, uh, um, an organization from a program country ensures uh, cooperation for at least three years. So it's, uh, but it's there. I mean, from, uh, from, uh, from the perspective of organization from a partner country, nothing really changes here. So this is a little recap recapitulation from of uh, what's available uh, in, in actions managed by national agencies. So as I mentioned, we have three different categories in mobilities. Youth participation activities may and may not include a mobility component. And these three uh, are available to program and partner countries likewise. Uh, accreditation the field of youth managed by national agencies is only available to program countries. So we are not looking at that right now. When it comes to key action two, previously called a uh, strategic partnership, it's changed. Uh, but uh, when it comes to the key action to only cooperation partnerships, these solid, as uh, Leonor uh, previously said, projects uh, will uh, be available to organizations from uh, partner countries. When it comes to small scale partnerships, these are un unfortunately available to only, only to organizations from program country. So we are not going to focus on that right now. Details about all these actions managed by national agencies will be perhaps presented during workshops today, 
if you have more questions or will need more details, everything is already described in, uh, in the program guide for 2021. All right, let, now let us look. This is it. This is what was already mentioned. So we have we are focusing in key action one, which is learning mobility in the field of youth on non-formal education, uh, as in, well, in general, in all field of youth. Uh, we want, uh, we, would, we would love young people to acquire new skills, new competences that are perhaps will be useful in the job market later on. And also uh, since um, uh, the commission, uh, um, after all these consultations with about, uh, EU countries, uh, agreed and uh, introduced youth participation activities. We want to really underline that, that we want to foster active participation in society, which is now in the very uh, shaky period of, uh, that we are now living in. It might be also interesting to look into this new action that is available also to partner countries. I really recommend that. Also, when you look at youth workers, we still want to continue, as in previous uh, perspective of Erasmus Plus, we want to continue developing skills that are really relevant for the youth work uh, in the field. So you are the experts perhaps of uh, what youth work is in your country, in your uh, environment. So we want to maintain uh, the, the, this high level and then bring it perhaps to an even higher if it's possible, thanks to initiatives that may be realized under Erasmus Plus. Um, and, the, uh, well, we want to make sure that the, the quality of your work will be uh, maintained as high as right now and perhaps even raised. It, it was already talked about uh, um, that uh, these uh, previously strategic partnerships, now cooperation partnerships, uh, more uh, give more perhaps substantial results uh, or because there are different uh, new uh, tools, initiatives uh, mm, that may be results of the projects and also uh, reinforced networks of partners, different um, practices, new qualities uh, of uh, youth work. So this is continued uh, through more um, uh, complex projects under cooperation partnerships and now as previously partner countries can participate in such activities. Uh, the, you will um, have a chance to talk about that later in, uh, this morning, uh, but still uh, the, the rule of a thumb is that there are three program countries and one partner countries. This is the minimum. All right, so uh, this will be key action two available to partner countries. Also in general, if we were to, uh, in a way, uh, sum up uh, of what's available in the program for um, program and partner countries as well, because now we are looking into cooperation between program countries and partner countries, which is very important uh, for us uh, and for SALTO centers uh, as well. So we want to continue promoting participation of young people in democratic life. This is uh, underlined uh, for the hundredth time so far by me, but it's, yeah, I want to make sure that it's very clear that it's one of the goals of the program. Uh, also, the uh, raising quality of informal and non-formal learning is what we are looking at right now. And uh, we still want to make sure that uh, we can provide you with the best tools available. Now we, we are serving you tools that uh, I just explained these possibilities of uh, organizing mobilities. Now perhaps a virtual with this virtual component or blended mobilities, it is also possible. And that's also by the way, will satisfy the need of a virtual uh, or digital priority of Erasmus Plus. So why not using it? Why not introducing an additional virtual mobility within your physical mobility? Well, there's an idea that you might be uh, thinking later. If you want to uh, learn more perhaps of uh, what we base the program on, you may want to refer to youth participation strategy, youth pass and ETS. So I mean, European training strategy available online. So these, apart from the uh, EU uh, strategy for youth, these are the documents, the policy context that uh, we base the, the the priorities for Erasmus Plus Youth on. And last but not least, 
we want to use, uh, look at Erasmus Youth Quality Standards. This here, you can see on the left that there is, it comes from the call for accreditation, but nevertheless, these quality standards uh, available online, just you, have, you may want to Google it. These are the rules that will need to be mm, abide by uh, all organizations that participate, that participate and all initiatives under Erasmus Plus uh, right now. So these will be the quality standards for youth exchanges and uh, youth workers mobility and youth participation activities. Uh, and it will give some guidelines how to specifically mm, implement uh, certain actions and uh, not only applications that you jointly with your partners from program countries will submit to national agency uh, will be uh, checked uh, against so it's a checklist it's a checklist of 14 points or 15 i will i think it's around uh, less than 20 points well developed it's around six pages long and these are guidelines that what we will be looking into the projects that uh, that will be submitted and uh, later on if projects will be granted and awarded grants we will want to make sure that you and program countries organizations from program countries um, abide by these rules in uh, implementation or during implementation of their activities so this is absolutely uh, vital that you familiarize yourselves with erasmus youth quality standards and these refer to not only practicalities like visa or preparation of participants, but also to more theoretical um, questions like, well, let's say, how to address youth policy in our projects. All right, so th this can be, this is easily uh, found on Google. Uh, it comes from the uh, call for accreditation, but nevertheless, it's there for all initiatives under K1. All right, so uh, now, well, maybe you have some questions for us. Thank you very much well, for your very detailed. So, all right, I will just stop sharing and come back to you. <laughs> all right. Uh, also, I see uh, Jai Hoon in the chart. Uh, uh, the Erasmus uh, Use Quality Standards document. So, you can also see the chat. So far, we received a few questions. I am in the chat uh, from I'm just Jaros looking at the chat. Yaroslav Garashchenko was asking uh, during uh, Leonor introductory remarks about uh, accreditation. And I think I think uh, I you, yes, you I think I answered, answered it already. I think you answered. <laughs> yes. I, I, I think it should be clear. Then you, uh, Yaroslav also asked about uh, uh, capacity building news field call. Actually, it was not part of your presentation because it's no. at central level. Yes. So maybe, uh, Leonor, if you would like to comment uh, about the new call, the capacity building news field. You also, I mean, you you, you introduced it briefly during your introductory remarks. To add something, you're welcome. I introduced it, it uh, briefly, and indeed, it's uh, an action that is done at a centralized level. So, indeed, it was not; uh, it was just for purpose of information that I mentioned it here. And uh, it is a very important action because it uh, allows the development uh, of major projects. Uh, it's one typical key A2 action. Uh, so, similar to the cooperation partnerships that were previously called strategic partnerships, and that will allow to, to develop infrastructures or uh, even more than that through the cooperation between um, uh, program countries and partner countries. As I had the occasion to mention too, this action is open um, to partner countries, but they are cannot have a leading role. So the organization that asks for the financing is an organization for program country. Uh, and it's uh, very well that the, the details of it are all explained in the, um, in the program guide and they will be detailed in the, the call for proposals. But I think it's a very interesting uh, opportunity in order to um, do large investments in, in, in the field of youth. 
I just like to clarify Do, um, about the list of countries for capacity building in youth field. Uh, I was checking yesterday and it's not published yet. Yes, this is a list of eligible countries who can participate. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, who can participate is, of course, all program countries and uh, the, um, the, the partner countries. I'm going, as I said, for simplicity, call it just like that from regions one to four. Mm -hmm. So including the neighboring countries. Uh, Russian is, is, is group four, so it, yes, is, yes, yes, it yes. is included. We also received one question from Anna Kulbashuk about uh, new Eastern Partnership use windows. <laughs> I guess it's about uh, central level. I, uh, as I know, I mean, it's, it's not mentioned in the program guide. So at the moment, it's not, it's, not, uh, uh, it's not clear when and in which form the new windows will be, uh, will be uh, uh, launched. Do you have any comments in this regard? Which uh, which uh, action exactly the capacity building? Uh, previously, it was capacity building in Newsfield, yes. When it will be launched? Well, I will send you soon a link uh, that I have to look for, but quickly uh, about the the call for proposals that have been already been launched. But as I also mentioned briefly uh, in my short introduction, uh, there is a question that I didn't manage to settle. So I would advise you seriously to ask the question through the NACOS to be sure that you have an harmonized uh, answer to that question that is applicable to, to, to all national agencies and that is clear for everybody. Some people told me that in order to have this action in 2021, we still need to wait for the approval of um, Annex uh, of Heading 6 uh, of the budget. Uh, other people said this is not true, this happened already and it can start, it anyway, uh, start anyway. So uh, each person, each opinion. So at the end of the day, it was not clear to me if it will be 2021 or 2022. I must say that I'm more convinced uh, it's not natural pessimism, it's not because I see the rhythm at which the, the call for proposals are going. I'm convinced that it will be more 22 than 21. But I will send you a link with all the call for proposals that are uh, running now. I'll do it right now, unless you have another question that you want to me, me to answer. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, uh, I can see a question that I can take. It's about accredited youth organizations. Uh, and it comes from Mariam on, in the chat. Uh, well, uh, it's asked, being asked here if uh, it's true that accredited organizations cannot uh, or are not eligible on, for funding the standard projects. Yes, this is true. Why is it so? Because uh, organizations that applied for accreditation already listed in their accreditation application what they would like to do in the, com in the coming at least three years. So they listed a number of youth exchanges, youth mobility, youth uh, workers' mobility and youth participation activities in this accreditation application. And after it's being uh, accepted and accreditation is awarded, they can no longer apply for standalone projects, additional projects, because all the initiatives that they already would like to do in the coming three years, at least three years, uh, are in the accreditation. So they don't have to compete with all other organizations that uh, will uh, well, perhaps submit applications for something. So it's not uh, possible for them to uh, apply. Uh, well, just to sum up, it's not possible for to apply for accredited organizations for ad additional funding because what they have in their accreditation, these are, these are plans of activities that were already accepted by national agencies. So if you have partners in program countries that have uh, accreditations in the field of youth, they will already have uh, applications there submitted. And one, one remark, uh, if I can. And the application for accreditation done by exclusively by organization from program countries, they don't have to indicate organizations by name that they want to call. 
have to list organizations from neither par partner nor uh, program countries. So this is it. This is if it answers well your uh, your question. Can I ask? Can I ask one more detailed question to to Jakub? Yes, please. Uh, for example, if I uh, if my organization is accredited and uh, I want to organize a youth workers mobility uh, like a training course, then uh, do I need to find the partners like accredited partners uh, no. across Europe or just uh, any kind no. of organizations that I will no. include? Uh, pa uh, participating organizations in activities under accreditation, well, the bigger term is accreditation, do not have to have uh, accreditation. So it doesn't really concern if you find partners uh, in the EU or outside the EU that have accreditation, it doesn't really matter. What matters is that your organization, if it's or, uh, accredited, has its plan that was already accepted by uh, a national agency in that country. So uh, your partner organizations can come uh, from all uh, eligible countries, meaning program countries and countries from group one to four and uh, among the partner countries. Mm -hmm.